Well, in this video, I kind of want to tell the story and hopefully cover the details of how we get from a crusty old beast such as this derelict 1950 Chevy 3100 5 window in a period of about 10 months to the newest icon, the Icon Thriftmaster, as you see here. But it's a long road, so let me try and cover the details. First, we work with the geniuses at Art Morrison to engineer a chassis that will embody the better dynamics of a contemporary sports car with the aesthetic of the vintage truck. So that is a 2x5 mandrel bent 180 wall chassis. All brackets are laser cut and fixture welded. We're running um, all American made components. Um, here you see the front spindles and the 20 to 1 ratio steering rack, uh, independent suspension, all TIG welded, uh, all fully adjustable. And there you see the tranny brace and the tunneling braces for the exhaust system. Here you see a reproduction body from Premier Street Rods. It's a licensed General Motors product. And then we start patching things together. So we start with a rendering and sketching out all the details, of course, as with all of our projects. And then we start to interface all of the known products that we're lucky enough to be able to buy from quality suppliers and start getting the truck to take some shape. Then, as with this body assembly, we spent a serious amount of hours uh, cleaning up and improving the gaps to bring them to contemporary standards, not 1950s standards. And we also ferro-tracked the body to get it into CAD, which allows us to use CATIA and SOLIDWORKS and other CAD programs to realize all these sort of evolutionary designs that we wanted to do for the truck. There you see a quick shot of the trial fit in raw 6061 aluminum of our dash panels and there's the panel after being brushed well acid dipped nickel plated brushed and then ceramic clear coated here you see the chassis all done gas tank was done by rick's tanks using oem in tank pump uh, running the vaporworks systems uh, curry nine inch rear with uh, superior axles four link rear with Johnny joints. All of the suspension pieces are just, uh, the idea is to stick to somewhat paved roads of known performance suppliers. So for example, this Wildwood for the braking system, running uh, six piston front and four piston rear and JRI tunable coilover shocks. There you see the catalytic converters and O2 sensor with the stainless steel TIG welded mandrel bend ceramic coated exhaust with turbo V groove uh, instead of conventional bolt flanges. I hate flange gaskets, they just suck. We worked with Art Morrison and ran his headers on the assembly. We chose the General Motors E Rod 5.3 LM4 V8 and then worked with our friends at Magnuson to do the air to water intercooled supercharger. So there we are. That was uh, my first day out driving it, uh, having a little bit of fun, getting a little too excited perhaps. So now I want to take you through uh, kind of a tour of the, the, the details in the design. So this color uh, was in Italy during the development of this truck, working on our Aston Martin project that uh, hopefully we'll be sharing with you later this year. And I stumbled into a contemporary Citroen that had this really cool color. It's like gray, but it's like brown. So I stole the paint coat off of it, and then we played around with it and changed the hue a wee bit and did the glass red eggshell matte. And I'm really happy with it. Uh, it. You know, it's a match for the Icon brand, but in the same respect, it's a bit different uh, from what we've done in the past. It's a, it's a really cool setup. Now with these trucks, we're hoping to build five of them for 2014 and early 15 deliveries. We're allowing the client to choose any color he wants matte or gloss. In fact, if you go on my website, we created a pretty cool emulator where the client can really play with full range of colors and then see it in matte, see it in gloss, and figure out what they want to get focused. The client may also select ride height, so we're offering a static ride height adjustment of six inches, 
Plus, if a client wants to go aggressive low, as we did with this particular truck, we can also do the new JRI hydraulic adjustable system that's neutral in regards to suspension dynamics other than height, but uh, allows you to bump up if uh, you have a nasty dip. That's the reverse camera hiding in the back, which plays through the Kenwood head unit. It's kind of a cool, subtle, modern touch. Here you see the greening hot rod uh, co-developed taillights, which are LED and all CNC'd, and then we created these reverse lights in the back. We also redesigned those tailgate chains. We had to do mini tubs in the bed, which you see how we executed those here, uh, because we wanted to fit some pretty sticky fat tires. Worked with Mark K to redevelop the tailgate with hidden hardware, and we stole that fuel tank filler from the Mercedes SLR Le Mans cars. The bed is done in Louisville Slugger Ash with the marine mat. Hubcaps are stainless and then acid etched with Icon. We pulled the same trick on the tailgate, it's real subtle. These are really cool, the old school peak mirrors with the LEDs embedded. And then I stole the classic Chevrolet font repurposed at Icon to CNC that front side marker. On the front of the hood, we redesigned that badge in its entirety, and that CNC in aluminum, and the lizard is just a masterpiece of CNC detail. Uh, our machinist is a rock star. And then there you see the United Pacific LEDs. that uh, We work with those guys a lot, really good stuff. The radiator, as with all my projects, we work with Griffin. And then here you'll see how we package the E-Rod with the Magnuson. No small feat, I might tell you. Um, to get the emissions sealed computer to collaborate and play well with the supercharger required uh, quite a network of help. We ran an AutoNet mobile, so the vehicle is a um, cellular hotspot and Wi-Fi hub. We ran a full Audison system running the AV Quattro and just three speakers and a bit one, but it is a full digital audio experience that's seriously powerful and crisp and clean and nice with no unnecessary clutter. There you see the front speaker placement. For the doors, we kept the shell completely stock, redesigned the armrest, handles, and window regulator as well as the panel. And then we kept it looking vintage, but did power windows with uh, tinted glass. It's like a nice smoked gray. All of the trim work, be it chrome, be it stainless, be it aluminum, all of it to create unity in the design was nickel plated, brushed, and then ceramic cleared by extreme coatings with a really durable uh, aircraft derived solution. If I had to pick a single element, these armrests are my favorite thing on the whole truck. I've been on kind of a Raymond Lowy kick lately, and uh, I kind of put myself in his shoes uh, when roughing out and designing all the details on this truck. Um, this project was just, just a blast to work on. For the seat, we worked with Glide Engineering, and then we refit Tempur-Pedic foam, and that is American Bison hide. And then I redesigned all the hardware, as you see here, which again is CNC and aluminum, and then blah, blah, blah. Visors, Bison, Headliner, Alcantara. Carpet is uh, German Berber, Hemden and Bison. Sport pedals are CNC. And here's the parking brake handle, which I believe came from our buddies at Low Car. Everyone wants cup holders these days, so here's your darn cup holder. I didn't want to put it in the seat. These actually work great. We borrowed these from the Mercedes G-Wagons. You can click, get them out of the way. There's my nifty fire extinguisher, which was required for autocross. For the gauges, we co-developed the gauges with our good friends at Dakota Digital, who told me, as long as I don't screw with the circuit board, the world is my oyster when it comes to indices, colors, fonts, and uh, there you see what we did. The dash is an incredible bit of mechanical engineering. Ferro tracked the dash, get it into CAD so we could control it. Then we took inspiration from the original stamped ribbed dash panel, which would have been a glove box and an ashtray, and used it, uh, that design language to create this. So as you may have noticed, there are no visible switches. Pretty much everything is run through Kenwood, courtesy of ISIS power. So ISIS is kind of cutting edge, um, aftermarket, custom car wiring harness systems. So through ISIS, with support from Kenwood, we're able to control ignition, start, climate control, power windows, all aspects of lighting, wipers, and everything through the head unit. 
So all of that functionality is then compounded by the normal features of the Kenwood as far as voice to text, uh, auto dial, uh, Google tie-in, YouTube, uh, any Android apps can be driven and on and on and on. Um, so really a bundle of modern utility hiding in the vintage aesthetic. These drop-down doors, uh, we used actually Traxxas RC shocks from RC, you know, little remote control cars to be able to fine-tune the actuation. And there's the Audison controller for fine-tuning. Instead of a 12-volt power port, we have a USB port in the dash. Let's take you for a ride. This truck is so much fun because it's literally a, a, a pickup with... Uh, an identity crisis. I mean, it, it, the, the smoothness of the handling, the acceleration, the weight balance, I mean, it's phenomenal. Um, we had an opportunity to autocross it uh, when we were voted into the Optima Top Streetcar Challenge. And you, know, you got your usual pro touring guys, and they're like, uh, can we go before the truck? They're going to slow us down. And we got out there and just spanked on them. So this truck's just a blast. The ass is a little light, as with all pickups. But what we did was... Uh, engineer the, uh, I think it's 29 gallon gas tank in the rear, which really helped the weight balance out a fair bit. Wiper system, uh, we worked with our friends at Newport Engineering to develop a system that kept the vintage aesthetic, but upgraded the wiper blades. And then the motor is a contemporary motor with hardened steel gears and uh, wipe delay and three speeds. We went with the extruded runners there for the tailgate. I was kind of up in the air about that. Squirrel here. Uh, so here's a little bit of uh, track time. Uh, this is the autocross event, which was good, good, good fun. Got to show off the Willwood brakes and show them uh, pickup trucks ain't just for hauling. Kill a single cone. Hey, hey. And here's the brake check. No drama. ABS master. Ta da. Now, here I'm going to cheat and speed it up because I don't want to bore you to death. So, this is the large course at Spring Mountain. So, watch us rail the car, or truck, or whatever you want to call it. Um, I guess that's my whole story. It's a long video, but I really wanted to take the time to try and communicate this. Hopefully, one of the more professional automotive video houses will come shoot proper doc. In the meantime, you're going to have to make do with my skill set. Icon4x4.com or iconthriftmaster.com, 818-280-3333. Thank you so much.